All right, y'all, I'm back. Today, I'm gonna go ahead and get all the accessories on. Basically, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the steering and alternator bracket. Obviously, they're both together right here. So yeah, I mean, basically this bracket holds up the alternator, this pulley, and then the, uh, not, not the water pump, but the steering pump. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and get the water pump. Obviously, it has six bolts. I only got new ones by ICT Billet. There they are. And then, obviously, I'm gonna go ahead and get the tray on, uh, and the intake and throttle body. Here's the tray. I went and got the new grommets in here. And then here's the part number that I'm gonna use for the the sensors and the wire harness. I've been using the Brian Tooling uh, LS kit. The rebuild kit obviously comes with it, mostly everything you need. Like these are here. This is for your coolant crossover tube. Obviously, if uh, y'all find these at the junkyard, go ahead and pick them up. All the new LSs have them. This one didn't. So I'm gonna use this one. And obviously, these are for the water pump. Headers, uh, I'm going to use the Schofield headers. I'm going to do that in a separate video. And then here's the gasket. Alright y'all, the BTR kit did not come with the intake gasket. So, I have to go buy that now. Good. Be right back. Alright y'all, I'm back. I went ahead and removed the tape off the motor. And then got the new gaskets. So don't forget that this gasket for the valley tray does go on one way. Make sure it just curves around the um, camshaft position sensor. All right, y'all went ahead and tied them, tied these bolts down. Remember, tied them from the center out. So this one, this one, this one, this one. That's what. That's like the torque sequence. Now, here are the knock sensors. It was going snug just down. Not that hard. All right, y'all. For these, all you gotta do is just snug them down. That's all you have to do. Don't over tighten them because they will break. And here's a new wiring harness. It, these the knock sensor and the wiring harness. They they're by Summit. That's why I got them. And let's see. It just goes like that. Obviously, the furthest one forward. This hangs out in the back. In any wire harness, whether you buy or like a good one, uh, it should be connections always back here. Oh, I see. I should could show you, but pull that out just like that. It is. Pull it out. The reason why they're built like this, so whenever you try to take them off, you squeeze here and then pull out. It is. You just hear a little click and that's it. And from here, just pull this forward. Sorry, I'm doing this one handed. Maybe. Pull the wire as you're pushing this down. <clears throat> So you just pull this, push it down. Once it has a snug, you can let go of the wire. There it is. You should hear air coming out. There it is. It's hanging back there. Alright, so y'all, if you have an OBS, this is where you're, you put the adapter right here for the oil. You want to go ahead and get that done right now. I'm just doing a process for the accessories. So you have to get the adapter, put it in there, and then you use your original OBS sensor. Here it is, oil pressure. This is why you never want to cut nothing. Obviously I have a mark here, oil pressure. And this goes to the connection to the new outlet. Should be sticking out this way, I believe, once everything is tightened down. Let's see camshaft position sensor obviously that goes with your wire harness and here it is oh here's the ground too 
Uh, I just cut mine just so I could remember. See, ground in the block, ground all the wires here. Instead of the heads, I like using the block. And all I see here is whenever you watch my other videos, and I just ran it this way with the vent tube. Uh, let's see, that's about it. Everything back there. Uh, I always say I need a new auto cable. This one's trash. Can't use from 95 and older. You can only use the Voitec ones. Uh, let's see. Obviously, Voitec 350s. You can use those as well. Or 95 Gen 3s cables. And let's see. Double check, double check, double check. Yeah. Intake. Oh, um. That's what you always double check. We're going to do the coolant crossover tube next. Alright, y'all. See this little, these go down into the block or the heads. These holes, that's where the screws go into. Obviously, this is just off the newer ones. See how this part curves? It actually slips in between the wire harness just like this. I believe that's how it should be. Just so your wire harness can just be right above it. Because if this is this tube is sitting on top of the wire harness, there's no bueno because it will be pressured on. Obviously, right, so this is just for the, uh, you can do a coolant bypass. So obviously, this goes to the throttle body. And then this just do the coolant bypass. I forgot how to, I remember down the road. So yeah, make sure obviously these little dowels, I guess. Oh, where that extra air goes to. See, snugs in, snugs in. There it is. Oh, and yeah, and don't forget, like I almost did, the screws. And one of these the little gaskets. Let's see, what can I set them? It's a work truck. Oh, right, y'all. See how this part has a gasket? That's where the actual screw goes to. Hey, yeah, I went and put the, the, the gaskets on the manifold. Time to set it on top. All right, y'all. Intake's on. You just want to make sure the gasket doesn't fall off. This side fell off, but I went and got it on last second. But yeah, it is looking good. Hang on. There it is. I'm out of the way. <laughs> so yeah, over here I got the EVAP delete for ICT billet. Um, I was gonna use that one over there, but that one had the EGR, so it was nasty and it was all gunked up. So yeah, and I always said I was gonna use that motor, but that motor's trashed. Now let's go ahead and see what else we got. Um, I'm going to get the power steam pump assembly, the bracket with the alternator. I'm going to get that on. All right, y'all. Uh, I noticed this one's remanufactured, and it has a uh, plug on it. And this one just has a bracket, and it looks original. Yeah, it looks original. So I'm about to ask the guys on the Facebook group to see which one I should use and why. I'm still waiting on the guys on Facebook for the OB Assault Facebook group. Anyways, um, when I got this on. Obviously I know for the OBS is you're going to need the... Whenever you do the um, upper radiator holes, you're going to have to use the swap one. Whatever vehicle you had, so basically 99 and up. GM vehicle upper radiator holes for the bottom one for the lower you just use the OBS one you just cut it make it fit and obviously here the hoses here they are let's use one of them gotta figure out what the other one is alright so you just one goes in here I thought it was these two I just gotta double check because one of them is going to the AC 
I believe it comes off an AC. Don't quote me on it yet. Let's see what else. All right, so this goes to the fuel wheel. This goes to the brake booster. So let's see, here's a brake booster from the OBS. This one should just plug in. Get that out of the way. I think I'm gonna leave it there for now. I just took a hold of the wire harness. But yeah, this goes with the brake booster. It's another one. This one in the rear actually goes with this one here. You just I always say this, if you do all your catch can, that's where you hook it up. Oh, where does that have to go? Yeah. Let's go and get the... How you say Fuel rail going. Oh, so you have to take these off too. You don't be needed them. You have adapters to go in the back of the fuel rail. Oh, this is the bigger ones to feed. The smaller ones to return. Alright, y'all. It looks like I have to take off the intake just because the fuel rail, the actual um, injectors, they're not sitting into the manifold, right? So I have to take it off, make sure I press them on, and then just install it one unit. That's what I should have done. Uh, also, this bolt, I need to go ahead and put it in more. I didn't realize it. And then I need to go ahead and figure out how I'm going to do the power steering. One of them just hooked up straight on. Hang on, let me get a light. One of them just is just a little hose clamp, so just have to tighten it down. This one though is cut. This is the one to this power steering, and it's cut, so I need to get another one. Um, I'll show you on this one. This one that has just a hose clamp is just use the original OBS. This is the one I need, but look at this one. This one's also cut. See how it has a lot of wiggle room to like cut this way, turn this way, and then just goes in here. Goes in with this one. So I need to find a line. I'll probably just get out of the junkyard. This one, y'all, you can use if it has a sensor. You just don't plug it in and you just send it basically. Oh yeah, today I got my friend Moses helping me out with the AC bracket. <laughs> Shout out to, let's see, who are these guys? Um, Pro Performance. They have a great video on how to do this. And that's who we're using today to help us out. <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. Just go ahead and follow the video, y'all. And it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Alright y'all, went ahead and got this for the the little spacers with label A go in the back between the head and the back bracket. The longer ones go here in the middle. These are the spacers labeled B. Alright, and then the next up is just the pulley. There should be a little hole with thread for this bolt. And that's about it. Oh, and here it is. Dirty Dingo Motorsports actually have a video on it with, by Truck U. Let's see. Just go ahead and pause the video and slow it down, and then that'll help y'all out. Oh, to hold this. Oh, then put the wash on your backside. I am so lost on this part. Mm -hmm. All right, see, so there's another hole with uh, thread. Let's go ahead and pull it through. Once it's tightened down, put it in the washer. And don't drop don't the Don't drop the bolt. All right, there's the bolt. And now we just tighten it up from this side. 
All right, y'all, went in and got the finishing touches. Uh, there is a knob for the pulley to go in. Make sure it's on the knob before you tighten this up. After that, you know, this one already has a thread on it. Make sure you tighten it up with the bolt. And before you tighten up these two brackets together with these lung bolts, you wanna go ahead and put, the, put one screw in at the bottom and slide it in. There's a little knob back here. There it is, for the actual R4 uh, pancake style. And there it is. Oh yeah, there it is, all the front accessories. The original R4 pancake style uh, AC. We wanna see if these lines work. They should work. I mean, I'm looking at them. Let's see. This one does have a hard turn on it. <laughs> Going back to the uh, canister over here, this line. Right out here, bro. Look at this. Oh, shit. I heard there's another part you're supposed to get here, but I'll look into it, y'all. Don't worry. All right, so this line right here goes into the condenser. And then this line just goes back into the, the cab of the truck. Let's see what else. And now we're trying to figure out what's next. <laughs> And I'm guessing what's left to do is do the headers, but we have to clean them and put in the exhaust studs. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, also, I have the hole back there between the engine and the bell housing. I have to find the cap that goes right there to cover it, as well as the cap for the starter right down there. Yeah, just a few things here and there to get things going. All right, so a reminder, I do have the EVAP delete right here. This one does not have the EGR, but if you want, you can always get. Uh, here's the EVAP and the EGR delete. 